Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Ghosts in Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be comparing the AK-12 and Remington R5. These are some of the more popular assault rifles in the game, and depending on who you ask, they're going to tell you either the AK-12 is the best assault rifle or the Remington R5. That title used to belong to the MSBS before it got nerfed, but now people gravitate toward these weapons, and they would definitely tell you that these are the best fully automatic assault rifles. On top of that, these are the two assault rifles that the pros kind of toss up and go around about which one is better, which one do the pros like, why do they not like it, why they use one versus the other. Generally speaking, you see people in pubs or public match players, normal guys like me and you, saying that the AK-12 is the better assault rifle, and you see a lot of pros gravitating toward the Remington R5 and saying that's a better assault rifle, and we're going to be talking about today why that is the case, exactly what these guns are doing, and which one you should be using. This is going to be a very technical episode of In-Depth. I've got a lot of graphs and stats and, you know, recoil plots and stuff for you. I reviewed each of these weapons individually in different In-Depth episodes. Those links are down there in the description. I highly recommend that you check them out, but for now let's do a quick down and dirty comparison of the important features of these two weapons. Number one is the damage. The AK-12 will deal 49 damage in close quarters combat, but drop off to 25 at a distance. The Remington R5 will be, do the same 49 up close, but it'll drop off to 20 at a distance instead of 25. That means the AK-12 is a four shot to kill at long ranges, and the Remington R5 is a five shot to kill at long ranges. So you've got one less shot to kill with the AK-12, and the ranges are different. They're quite different, and we're going to focus focus on those in a little bit, but we're going to move on to rate of fire next because that's time to kill. As per the game's coding, how it's programmed to do what it's supposed to do, the AK-12 is supposed to shoot at 689 RPM, and the Remington R5 is supposed to shoot at 631 RPM. These rates of fire are very close together, they're only 9% different technical wise, but for those of you that watch in depth, you know that the game code stated rate of fire is not the exact same as the game rate of fire due to the rounding error with the old Quake engine and how it thinks and frames it has to round up and down to the nearest frame so perhaps a more accurate measurement would be a measured rate of fire an actual rate of fire that I measured personally from my gameplay and you'll notice that the difference is very very minimal the AK-12 rate of fire is now 620 RPM they always round down they never go back up they go down toward a minimum and they fluctuate based on your frame rate this is more important on PC but it does happen on console too the Remington R5 shoots at 616 RPM so it's a very very minimal difference like less than 1% difference now, and this can honestly be human error. So for all intents and purposes, for the rest of this episode, we are going to assume that the AK-12 and the Remington R5 shoot at the same rate of fire. If they don't shoot at the same rate of fire, it's very, very close, and close to the point where you will not notice it. Your human eyes are not that good. Now that we're all done with the damage and rate of fire, we're going to move into the most critical part of this episode, and that's ranges. The R5 and the AK-12 do not have the same ranges, and I'm going to be showing you some graphs from Simthic.com. You can go to the website and generate them. I put the link on the screen right there, and there's a link, uh, the first link in the description will take you there. I actually have permission to use these from the owner of the site. He says I can use anything I want, just so long as I give credit. It's an old outstanding agreement, but I believe it still holds true. This first graph that you're seeing right here is a graph of the damage of the R5 and the AK-12 over range, with the AK-12 being the uh, green, that's not green, that's yellow dashed line. I'm terrible with colors. I can't see them very well. And the R5 being the orange one. And you can see that there is a critical difference in the middle to where the Remington R5 outclasses the AK-12 in damage. Its damage drop-off is later, and its damage minimum is also later. So we have this, this range here to where the damage is totally different. And if you do a superposition of some other stuff that I got from the site, you can can see that there is a range here between I'm going to say uh, oh it didn't read out but there's a critical range here between I'm gonna look at the chart and guesstimate about 37 and 45 meters is about an eight or nine meter range there where the Remington is killing in three shots and the AK-12 is down to taking four and that's a critical range where if they're both shooting at the same speed the Remington R5 is going to kill faster than the AK-12 and therefore be a better weapon if you want to look at it in terms of time to kill and not necessarily superimposed graphs you can see this one and this one is again assuming that they shoot at the game code rate of fire not the measured one and you can see that section in the middle that uh, trapezoid right there that is the section in which the R5 outclasses the AK-12 because it has the lower rate of fire so in this particular graph it's time to kill so the lower your uh, time to kill the better so before that section the AK-12 is better 
After that section, the AK-12 is better, but in that critical section, the R5 is going to be the best assault rifle. If you want to play around with attachments, we can do that. In public matches, most people put a silencer on the AK-12 and a foregrip, and they're going to run what I would call the standard silenced AK-12 stealth class. And most people for the Remington R5 just leave it base. They'll put on a foregrip or red dot sight or extended mags. I don't see muzzle brake quite as much, which is a shame because it's a great attachment. And in that case, the AK-12 is tremendously outclassed, and it's what I would call standard most commonly seen in public match usage. The AK-12 is way, way outclassed by what I would call the standard Remington R5 as far as range and damage is concerned. I mean, you can just see that huge, huge difference there in the middle of damages. And if we did that on the time to kill graph, again, you would see that there is a huge area of what I would call medium range where the R5 is clearly the better weapon. You're going to get less shots to kill, and it's very important. The next, and this is also a very important graph we're going to talk about later, is an AK-12 with muzzle brake versus a standard R5. When you put a muzzle brake on the R on the AK-12, it makes the range almost identical to the R5. It's very similar and there's almost no range at which the R5 is going to perform better, and in this case, I would say the AK-12 beats, AK-12 muzzle break anyway, beats the standard R5. Of course, R5 with muzzle break will beat AK-12 with muzzle break in that critical area, but that's important. And the next and last graph we're going to look at today before we go back to regular gameplay is recoil. Now, mind you, these recoil plots online are not exactly perfect. They were made at a time before there were other things known about the weapon, but looking at these plots from Synthic, you do get the general idea that the AK AK-12 has a very, we'll say, wide swath left and right and a little bit on top and it bounces around in sort of this half circle area when it comes to recoil, whereas the R5 is a much more vertical weapon. It doesn't go left and right very much, but it does kick upward. That means the AK-12 may be overall more accurate, but the R5 is more precise. It's predictable. It's going to do the same thing over and over and over again. And now that we're finally done with those graphs, we're going to go back to gameplay for just a second. So as you can see, the R5 beats the AK-12 in what some might consider a critical area, or what some might consider a pointless area, and the R5 is more precise. And I know a lot of people are like, oh god, graphs, the pain, the numbers, I can't handle it, nope! And then I've actually got a lot of requests in in-depth episodes for me to show the range at which these things happen. Like, please don't tell me 20 meters, show me 20 meters. So the next thing I'm going to show you is the exact range that these weapons interact with. I'm going to show you exactly what was on the graph here in the game. So I'm here on Stormfront, and I got some subscribers to come in from Twitter and stand in front of me, and I put them at the exact range, that is the exact three-shot kill range of the AK-12. If I shot him three times, he'd die. His buddy to the left would not. However, if I broke out the Remington, the guy on the left would die in three shots, and the guy on the right would die in three shots. However, not the AK. Again, the guy in the front is the limit of the AK's range, and the guy in the back was the limit of the R5's range. And when I walk up closer to them, you can see this is the, you know, eight meter difference between the two. That's how far apart they are, where the three-shot kill ranges are different, and that is the range at which the R5 kind of out-hedges the AK-12. I'm going to use that word hedges later on. I've got a very specific use for it. But that's the critical area at which the R5 is better, and I believe that is why a lot of the pro players and players in general like it, along with the more precise recoil instead of the string. Again, so if I shoot this guy three times, he will not die. Whereas if I get the uh, R5 out, I can shoot the guy in the front three times, and he'll die if I'm going to do that and quit playing around here. And uh, do count the hit markers when I shoot this guy. I got a little bit spray happy because the clock was uh, counting down. I missed a few shots, but he does die in three. I had to test it. And that is where the guns are better. Or that's anyway, that's where the R5 outclasses the AK. There are other things to take in mind other than just this range factor. The AK-12 has more ammunition. The base magazine for the AK-12 is 30, and the base magazine for the R5 is 40, is uh, 24, mind you, my bad. I was about to say the extended mag AK was 45, and the extended mag R5 is still just 36, which is not all that impressive. So if you run the R5, you will have ammunition concerns, uh, both in your magazine and in your overall supply, because your overall supply will be lower. I actually run extended mags on the R5 all the time. I really, really don't like running out of ammo. The cool thing about the R5, though, is that it may have less ammo. Uh, you know, it reloads faster, though. I don't know if it's because your ammo is lighter or whatever, but it, the R5 reloads about 20% faster than the AK-12 in every facet. That's the empty reload with no bullets, the full reload with a bullet in the chamber, and the reload cancel time. They're all almost exactly 20% faster than the AK-12, so the R5 does reload faster. And when it comes to which one of these weapons 
Legends is better and why different types of players prefer it, I'm going to explain the strengths of each weapon right here. The R5 hedges over the AK-12's range, and I use the word hedges kind of like a hedge fund or an investment. It's It minimizes the risk that you're taking in ranged engagements in a 1v1 combat. It's also more precise and reloads faster. So you are going to imagine that you are a pro player and you're facing off against other pro players, and while the AK-12 might be great for pub stomping, you know that there is a weapon where you can gain another, you know, 8, 9, 10 meters of range over the AK-12. Well, let's say you pick the R5 and your enemy has the AK-12, you've got that 10 meter kind of buffer range, or 9 meter, whatever, to where your gun is stronger. And that's the exact same thing that you see pros doing with muzzle break. You saw them doing it with muzzle break in Black Ops 2 when it was a much weaker attachment. They would take anything to just gain that smidgen of an advantage over their enemy. The R5 is also a more precise weapon. I don't think it's as great for spraying, even though you've probably seen me spray with it. But if you shoot in bursts of 3, 4, or 5, it can be a very accurate weapon, and it is better than the AK-12 in that regard because the AK-12 has a bonus kick multiplier for the first two rounds or first two or three. They kick really hard and then the gun settles into that wide spray pattern. The R5 doesn't have that and it's much more precise to begin with and it reloads a little faster. I don't think that's a big deal though. However, nobody can really argue that the AK-12 does not perform better at most ranges because it does. The AK-12 absolutely does perform better than the R5 at most ranges. It's arguably better up close. It shoots theoretically faster. Realistically, it's very similar or the same. Your long range advantage is much better. Four shots to kill is always better than five shots to kill. And it's a more spray happy weapon. If I had a whole lot of people in my face, if I were going for clips or feeds, I could hold down the trigger and just hose them all. And it wouldn't kick very far. It wouldn't kick very much. I don't. I spray with it all the time and I don't have a problem controlling it. So the AK-12 is definitely going to be your better weapon when you're pub stomping, when you're out there hunting other people. That's what I use all the time. If I were going to play on the pro circuit, if I were going to do GBs or whatever, even though I really don't like that five shot to kill at long ranges, I would be very attracted to the Remington for its extreme precision for the first couple of shots and for its uh, ability to out hedge others. I might actually go without extended mags for 4v4s and just run muzzle break on it, and that would really make it a very powerful weapon at beating other assault rifle users. Well guys, that's all for this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. You can check out the previous episode by clicking the box on the left. The next episode is going to be a secret project. Can't tell you what it is. It's too super secret and important. Also, don't forget to check out my sponsors in the description. Drifter out.